right, folks, welcome to another episode of Film Study. This is Ken McCusick. We have a really good show for you today. We have Luke uh, joining us to talk about crowd noise. And uh, Luke, I'm sorry, your last name is Ball, is that correct? That is correct, Ken. Okay, really appreciate having you on. I hope it's okay to mention that. Uh, but we did not typically have a topic like this, but <laughs> this show is for what you're passionate about uh, regarding the Ravens. And I, I tell you, I really do enjoy watching the game as a fan, and part of that is making noise. Luke, how are you doing today? Doing great, Ken. Appreciate all you all the work you do for the Ravens community. You know, you're you're more analytical. Where this is more my cup of tea than Meathead fan base. You know, like, let's get riled. Let's pump up loud. Pump up the crowd, um, and you know, and really go from there. So appreciate you having me. It's it's playoff season. Couldn't be more excited. Yep, me me too. And we've had some uh, some good crowd noise moments in Baltimore this year already. Uh, you know, a fair amount of false starts. The Ravens are really leaning into it and crediting every false start or delay of game or timeout called by the offense to the fans. And I think that's a it's a great way to do it. They have a decimal counter on the board. I don't know if it's real or not, but I think it, it, it portends, <laughs> it pretends to be. Uh, tell us a little bit about it in terms of, of, uh, of any background you want to give before you talk about uh, about how exactly to make good crowd noise. Sure. So um, I think an important part of being a Ravens fan is having a great home field advantage. You know, we, we really proud ourselves on being loud, making it noisy for the opponent. And, and really since Harbaugh's taken over, we've had a really dominant home field advantage, specifically in the early Flacco era. Um, the win percentage was astronomically great. You know, for a 10 year stretch, I believe, uh, we had a like a 78% win advantage, or we would win 78% of our home games. But if you really narrowed into some of the great years like 2008 to 2014, it was an 810 winning percentage, which is absolutely wow. uh, wonderful. All right. So and and then uh, it, it hasn't always been great. And obviously, when the team is not as good, that's that's it's not a, not going to be as good. The Ravens this year, great road team as well. Absolutely. And part of it this year, it feels like some of the games we've really hit new you know, levels as a stadium, specifically the Bengals and the, the Rams game at home. Uh, I felt like the crowd was really into it, looking at the decibels on the counter. Like you said, who knows if it's if it's completely accurate, but there were some numbers that I had never seen before in the stadium. So it's great to see that. They did report at one point that the, the crowd noise, not this year, but in a past year, had reached over 143 decibels. I don't know exactly how or where they measured it, but mm -hmm. that would set the all-time stadium record that had been set in Kansas City for about 142 decibels, I think. Correct. I tried finding it online. Every website will say that Arrowhead has the 142 decibel, but I think we can beat it with this upcoming home game. I'm, I'm pretty optimistic about that with, with how excited everybody is. All right. Um, other sources that talk about it, what would you like to talk about next? I, I, I don't want to direct your, your project here. Yeah. So, I mean, some some little tidbits to point out uh, earlier on the Manning cast this year for one of the Monday Night Football games, Patrick Mahomes said that he's only had to switch to a silent count twice, once in Seattle and then Sunday Night Football in Baltimore in 2021. Um, you know, it, it's it's nice to hear that, you know, we're, we're making that the loud noise against our opponents. Um, the Bengals game specifically, I, I, I think in the first half, they had to use a few timeouts and there were a few false start penalties because the fans were so loud. So uh, really, I have a few tips here. Some are more general tips. Some are more game specific tips. And it's not meant to be, you know, I, I think everybody knows how to cheer. So it's not really to explain how to cheer per se, but it's it's some interesting things to think about when you're sitting in your seat. Maybe you want some extra motivation we can talk through the game and, you know, when is appropriate to, to be loud, which in my opinion is most of the time, especially on defense. But mm -hmm. uh, if we can get into more specific details here. Please <laughs> take us down this road. All right. So I, there's really some gen generic tips when, when you're trying to maximize crowd noise. But I'm going to jump into some interesting game specific tips. The first is a lot of fans will know, hey, the opposing teams on offense, they're getting to the line of scrimmage. Now is the time to be loud. But really, you want to be loud while they're communicating the play into the huddle as well, because it's a trickle down effect uh, where, you know, it, it's, it's a chain of communication. You want to break it as early as possible. Great point, obviously. And this was a big point of Brian Billick 
back when crowd noise was first coming to Baltimore in a big way in 2000. I mean, it was there before then, I guess, but in 2000 and a little bit thereafter, he said, if you could please start cheering <laughs> when the, when the opposing team is in the huddle, cause that's when they'll have a lot of tr- trouble getting the play called Uh great advice to start with there. Sure. And, and that's one of the things that I remember from that Bengals game was us being loud early and then them struggling to get out of the huddle with the play in mind so that they couldn't even go to their checks or their audibles at the line because people were thrown off. So I, I think that's, Really important. And and one of the ways to really trigger that is specifically on third downs, important second downs is you may feel like an idiot kind of doing it. I know I was when I first started to do this, but if you stand and really wave your arms up in the air, like the players do down on the field, even if you're the only person standing, you'll notice that, that people latch onto that in your section. They'll see, Hey, you know, now's the time to get loud. Um, sometimes it's obvious when when everyone's going to stand, but it's really those downs where you know you get a few seconds early. Those few seconds can make a difference in how loud the stadium's going to be. Yeah, you know, I think there is a desire not to be first in making crowd noise. That's kind of weird at an NFL game. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't expect people to have it, but uh, you know, start the screaming by by all means. Be the first person to do it is definitely one of the one of the things I've always thought. I I don't I'm not a big guy to get people out of their seats even necessarily. I don't think you have to do that, but I'm definitely a big person. To start the noise first. Absolutely. And you'll notice that, you know, the first drive were pretty loud. And then the second drive, you know, people might get a little more comfortable depending on how the game's going. But if you're continuously, you know, continue doing the cheering by the time the third and fourth quarter roll around, everybody's in that rhythm. They've been cheering all game. They're warmed up. They're stretched out. Um, It's just, you know, that that natural thought comes to cheer much easier. Now, just thinking about how this is impacted by cold weather. Um, it is a lot easier, I think, to cheer in warm weather because you don't have, first of all, you don't have padded gloves you're wearing that might take some sound if you're megaphoning your own mouth kind of thing with with gloves. And second of all, if you're talking about clapping and whatnot and some of the ability to really be clap loudly, you just can't do it nearly as well with gloves. Absolutely. What I've noticed, though, when I am wearing gloves, it's extra padding. So if we are standing and we want to tap on the seats or if you're in an aisle seat and you're tapping on the railing, you know, it's not going to hurt your hand as much. So um, sometimes the padding can help a little bit. Obviously, if you are going to be, you know, you know, banging on seats, make sure that, you know, the people around you are OK with that. I, I don't want to be rude when I'm, when I'm actually making that motion. Are, are, do you have a, a kind of a thunderclap of a clap that you can come together where you, you 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 put your hands together and it definitely annoys the hell out of the person next to you? <laughs> I actually have a uh, like a low O that I'll just do continuously, first down, second down. You know, using my diaphragm as opposed to my throat. Um, you know, you can keep that that noise going throughout the entire game. So I, I feel most people will look around at me. Hey, it's first down you know, why are you being loud already? And it's, it's that, lo- that low O can, can carry. Let's, let's hear what that low O sounds like. It's like, Oh, or what is, what is it like? Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I, would, I would see how you'd have trouble keeping that up for, <laughs> for four quarters continuously, but okay. Yeah, um, there's, there's been a few times where you get lightheaded and you might get a little dizzy, um, hold on to that railing for extra support. If you're in that aisle seat, um, but it's all for the passion. It's all for the, the the men in the purple and the black. You know, they love it. So I'm here to do my duty as a fan. All right. And I, I think your advice on banging on the chairs is really good advice. I, I I would not suggest you do this. And and it's one way to really piss off opposing fans is mm-hmm. to bang on their seats or kick on their seats or do anything that's annoying. I mean, yeah, you'll 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 annoy your own fellow fans as well. Um what what else what else would you recommend? <laughs> All right. So here's an interesting one. When the opposing team is going on fourth down, it can be confusing. Sometimes you'll even hear broadcasters not sure if that opposing team is going to go for it on fourth down. So sometimes it's obvious. Maybe, you know, they're they're on our side of the field, the Ravens side of the field, and it's a little too long for a field goal. But, you know, they're, they're down close enough and they're not going to punt it. At the Miami game earlier this year, they went for it on fourth down a few times in their own territory. So as fans, we were busy celebrating the third down that we stopped, right. not realizing that they were going for it on fourth down. So sometimes people can be turned around, high-fiving, not realizing that we need to continue to be loud for fourth down. Now, most of the time we do get understand this by the time they're at the line of scrimmage, but it's more to the first point of them being in the huddle and getting the play in. 
Um, just trying to keep an eye on that. If you do notice they're going forward on fourth down, you know, try to make the fans in your section aware. They may be conversing, you know, grabbing a sip of their drink. Um, anything to, to your drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything to build awareness really helps with with the fan noise there. All right, very very cool. Uh, now, in terms of we mentioned the 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 in the huddle noise being the optimal time to start. Now, I'm a fan who needs to pace himself in terms of of what moments I can yell. When can I stop yelling? <laughs> I don't know if I'm the right person to ask that question to, um, but it would be, you know, commercial timeouts. That's where you can save your breath when when the Ravens are on offense specifically. Um, we're big into the MVP chance these days. Trust me, I've, I've been yelling MVP for, you know, six, seven weeks now, uh, but not when we're on offense. So when we're on offense is when we can really take a seat, enjoy what's in front of us, watch, you know, Lamar ball out and, and have fun. Um, sometimes it, it can there can be a little, a little chatter during when we're on offense. And that's sometimes when we're going for it on fourth down, um, it's never intentional. It's more, we're excited. Hey, check it out. We're going for it on this play. You know, we're, we're con- conversing a little bit, but all of that little crowd noise can add to just this, this ambience around. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind too, that if we are going for it on fourth down, I, I'm not a big fan of when people shush, um, I don't, I don't know if that's the appropriate way to, to handle it, but just be mindful, um, that, that, that little chatter does add up. Okay. All right. Very good. You wouldn't want to be told to shush given how you acted a game. So you, you don't want to tell anybody shush. I get that. That's only, it's common courtesy. I I've got exactly. another, I've got another angle on this and, and, sure. and I guess two, two points. The first is that I, I always stop my noise making at the snap of the football. Communication is over at that point. I don't think there's anything on the play that typically is going to be gained and there will be other residual crowd noise. I'm not concerned about, uh, about, uh, um, you know, a, a single voice being heard from one offensive player to another on the field after the snap. I I'm, I'm more want to avoid uh, communication to that point. The other is that I think if you want to confuse the snap of the football, that making other noises right up to the snap is good, but also making noises at various different levels, like a consistent, oh, I wouldn't think that would be as useful, although every movie needs background scenery as well as the star talent in the front. And and also to be adding um, a chance of irregular pitch that sound like they might be the snap of a snap count. And if you can add that, then you may actually create a a false hard count for that offense. That's something, by the way, the defense is prohibited from doing in the NFL. So you 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 ought to know it has value to create, you know, something where where you're essentially think of it as barking at the quarterback as your as your noise. Um, not not it doesn't have to be words. It can literally be be barking. So it sounds like individual words are being called out. Um, uh, from from field level. See, now that's that's next level thinking. I would have never <laughs> never thought of that. I'm busy trying to make a lot of noise, not the variation of noise. So that's something I'll, I'll put in my back pocket. I'll add it to the you know the, the deck of chips to to bring into in, into our next game. I, I have a feeling this might not be the last time we do this presentation or a or a sister <laughs> effort. So let's uh, let's make sure it's on there next time. That's great. All right. And just a few more small things. Um, I, I really want to mention just having more Ravens fans might be the biggest factor in the stadium. So, you know, we you know, ho- hopefully f- fans are out there. They're able to access playoff tickets um, if they aren't or if they know of somebody that's looking to sell. If you could sell, you know, directly or through a way that's, you know, a little more controlled rather than a third party vendor, just because you never know if you list your tickets, if that'll go to an opposing fan who, you know, may take away from the number of bodies that are cheering for the purple and black. OK, that is a fantastic point. And so there's, there's there's a few things about this. First of all, opposing fans, and this is true of fans from several different cities specifically, can really spoil a day at the ballpark. Um, they, I, I've been a road football fan, too. I want to be noisy when they don't want me to be noisy. And that's very annoying. I jump up out of my seat and get excited at a time where they want me to sit the fuck down. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's it's an annoying thing to 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 have visiting fans there. There is a method I would suggest. Okay, for playoffs, your tickets are going to be in demand, but go ahead and post them out on SeatGeek 
at a price that you would sell them to opposing fans and make it be 75% higher than what you sell them to Ravens fans. And then mention on Twitter, my seats are available to Ravens fans at this. If you want to pay fees and 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 buy them otherwise, go out to SeatGeek and get them there. And then you can you can make a transaction uh, on the side. You can avoid the SeatGeek fees uh, if you're selling to a Ravens fan, and that's nice too. And it still allows you to make sure you get your tickets sold if if you have to do so. Because I understand that's a, just a normal problem. But get you know at least give it Ravens fans fans a chance to buy those tickets by putting them up on Twitter, on Reddit, other places. Absolutely. That's a great point. And for this playoff bracket, we have some opposing teams where their fans travel really well. So yep. that's something to keep in mind that depending on the matchups that, that come, you know, for this round and potentially further um, to, to look out for the local fans really would help out. Yeah, really. That was a problem with the Pittsburgh game. And obviously that was a miserable weather game or whatnot. But the fact that the Steelers have everything to play for and the Ravens had nothing to play for meant that stadium was dominated by Steelers fans. And it's 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 not a terrible thing. And frankly, there's something purgatorial about selling your tickets to a Steelers fan to go out into that mess to see TJ Watt get injured and and you know have all of the things that happened in that game that is actually kind of amusing to me. But on the mm-hmm. other hand, it just meant it's it's a lesser experience for Ravens fans being there with all those Steelers fans around. Absolutely. And uh, personally I hope we see them again. We'll see if that happens. But uh, you know, as, as we progress, you know, being able to get more Ravens fans in the stadium, the better. So hopefully we can continue to that path forward. Okay. Um, but, but as far as my, the, the tips go, that's where, you know, I'm, I'm pretty content. Uh, there's some other, you know, easy things like be sure to stretch early during the game. You know, you don't want to jump into the first play and just blow your voice out immediately, especially with with a lot of folks working virtually. If it is a Sunday game, you don't want to hop on a, a Zoom call and, and not have it, you know, not sound great to your clients if, that, if that's your line of work it, or even show up into the office and not be able to speak. So no, one, nobody wants that. Um, so I think stretching is 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 pr- pivotal there. So just keep that in mind that when you're doing this to, to really stretch and, and get into the flow of things especially with being colder out, you know, you may have to layer up as well. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this advice is, is, is rides that line between being very effective and being very courteous as well, Luke. And I really appreciate that. I mean, we do want, we do want the don't be a jerk thing to, to mm-hmm. continue. And absolutely. Uh, I, I, I appreciate the, the way in which this is being delivered. And I think you're giving useful information on how people should do it. That's uh, as great stuff and keeping them ready for work the next day. That, that is an, that's an optional <laughs> one for me, but it's a, uh, it's a good one. Oh, I learned from experience the hard way. So <laughs> just trying to get that, that message out there. All right. All right. Outstanding topic. I'm glad we had time to discuss this. Is there anything more that I have I've cut you off from here? No, everything. I think we've communicated everything we want to get across. And I hope that, you know, everyone show up to the lots early to get into the stadium early to bring the most passion you can for this this next matchup. Ken, like you've mentioned before, as going to take to games my whole life, I want to see an AFC championship in Baltimore. The players have their roles and responsibilities. We do as fans as well. The more we can help out, the better. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding stuff. Uh, Luke, tell folks where they can talk football with you or talk rooting, cheering for you online. <laughs> well, I'm not too heavy online with my presence, but if anyone's in lot H before the game, you know, feel free. To, um, I'm a big dude. I'll be wearing a Kyle Hamilton jersey. I, I stick out like a sore thumb. So feel free to say hi. OK, just got my Kyle Hamilton jersey in the last few days as well. So that's what I'll be wearing to the game. Uh, and awesome. by, by means for other other people, always come by and, and take a visit in row one. Sorry, section 153, row 19. Um, you can actually have, since I'm in the front row there, the first raised row, it's very easy. It's right by the United gate. It's an easy place to, to say hi. Uh, but Luke really appreciate having you on, uh, other folks out there. If you'd like to be on a film study short, like Luke, and you have a, t- this is, this is all it requires It's a topic you're passionate about. Luke, actually, I didn't, I had no idea of how prepared a presentation we were going to get from Luke. He did send some bullet points in advance, but this is great. This is exactly the kind of topic that that's uh, fun. You want to talk about tailgating? That's great. Where are the great places? You want to talk about, about going on the road to see playoff football or going to the Super Bowl? We probably have a slot for that coming up, or we'd like to have a slot for that coming up. Uh, please hit me up. DMs are always open on Twitter. I'll get back to you uh, and uh, very quickly about your idea. How long did it take me to respond to your idea, Luke? Uh, less than 10 minutes, maybe probably less than five minutes, honestly. Okay. All right, great. It was, a good, it was a good idea. I loved it right away. He, he tossed in some bullet points, and, and I said, yep, we're on this. 
Uh, anyway, really appreciate that. Hope other people will, will join me. Luke, thanks again for coming on. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate it. Big fan. We'll talk to you next time on Film Study.